So hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our second episode of Lenses on Air. And today's guest is amazing Giswa. He's just a wonderful creator and a wonderful artist and personally one of my favorites, I have to say. I'm not ashamed of it because he's, honestly, his art is something surreal and something so spectacular. So hello, Giz. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very proud that you wanted to have me and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. You've actually studied fine arts in the Royal Academy in Haag and then you studied philosophy in the University of Amsterdam. And when you create your work, you obviously have uh, in your mind, you have the connection between these two spheres and etc. But can you tell us more how, how do you actually see it and how it informs one another? Mm, well, when I was creating an art academy, uh, obviously you're much more into material than when you are working with language, mm -hmm. it seems at first, but you always use the concepts and you think about the, 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 the physical medium you use. And I always felt I needed an escape, like you make something in clay, but you also want to think about it with your head, which is not made of clay. It's a different medium. Language is a different medium. The, the, the imagination in your head is another medium. And, it's, and, and I felt like where they meet, then it becomes interesting or then, yeah, then, then reality emerges. So not just from one person or one piece of clay, but in the, in the connection with it. So I always wanted to reach yeah, a little bit beyond the medium itself. Mm -hmm. And then when I started doing philosophy, obviously I was just interested in as well, as well as yeah, philosophy for me was a way to change your perspective, not a way to find truth, mm -hmm. but a way to see different, yeah, the world in a different way. If mm -hmm. you read uh, reads uh, Kant all of the time or Nietzsche, you will have two different views, like, you know, and, and this is what I like, the, the shift of the perspective. Mm -hmm. So I started doing philosophy and then I noticed that language obviously itself is a medium and it's not so different from clay. Mm -hmm. It's not more, it's not more controlled. The words just come from somewhere in your head. You did not put them on paper at first. They just start flowing. And it's, it's also more natural and more mysterious, just like when you make something in paints or clay. So, so I see, a, yeah, I don't see much difference between them. Mm -hmm. So for you, it was like a continuation of one another, because I have to say, like, it's not the, the traditional road, let's say, of continuation, your trip and journey with studies or anything after art, go into philosophy, at least in my opinion. But as you said, I think it just... Bro totally broadens your horizon and the way you see the world because if you didn't like or if you didn't want to create one specific clay for your entire career let's say philosophy obviously opens so many different possibilities and different minds and different opinions that you didn't think of before yeah exactly yeah i just want it's an, an extra layer like when i'm making something I'm not only looking at the material. I, I really was not that good in the in the material thing itself. Maybe I had some talent for the yeah the the, the concept or for yeah getting a sort of flow. But I don't. I'm need, not a really good painter or anything. I'm just sort of yeah. I, I think it's not there where the where the where the talent is. But what I find interesting, I always look at myself while doing it. Mm -hmm. Because you're also part of the material in a way. So you're not just thinking, I want the clay to look like that. But you also think, why do I want it? Or how does it look like? What does it look like? Me wanting this with the clay. What, is the, what are these relations? And obviously, well, for me, obviously, philosophy gives all the tools to, to, to do this more seriously and, and more rigorously mm -hmm. uh, to look at yourself and the world in this, yeah, uh, in, a, in a distant way, but uh, yeah, just to step beside yourself, to mm -hmm. look at yourself, not to find the real self, but because that, I think, is how the self moves through time. Mm -hmm. That's how you become a different person. You're always the same, but you're always different as, at the same time. So, yeah, that's the, 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 that feeling, that, yeah, that natural way to be is what I would like to see or experience or make in a work. 
because as you said, it's very important that you are a part of the creation that you create actually. It's like machines connecting up and there's not, it's not that me as the parts I offer are more important than the other parts. Mm -hmm. It's more like finding a, finding a choreography between yourself and the world around you or the medium you use. So it's not up to me. It's not like I'm a dictator. I'm going to show what is the best or the most beautiful or, or what you have to experience as a user. Yeah. But I would rather offer them something maybe a bit more simple where they can find more of themselves in it. Like, like it doesn't give a single use, but it can give you many ideas, just like poetry maybe would. How did you come up with the creating IR filters? How did you actually decide that this is what I think I'm going to do and I'm going to step into this totally different reality? Tell us more about it. Well, I didn't think about it so much at first, but the, the thing was after the art academy and philosophy, I was doing uh, exhibitions. I was working together with a collective of people and we did, yeah, uh, we had cool experiences and we did cool things, but in the end, in a collective, it was okay, but to work alone and to find the money for it. And there's all these possibilities uh, in the country where I live, but you have to set your mind through it and you become like a business person in a way. Like it would inform how your work looks. And I'm, and you can still be a great artist, I'm sure, but I, I'm not good at it. I, can, I cannot do it and I don't like it. It changes me. It changes my work. And you have to fit in a group. And this is what I've always had problem with or fighting against. Mm -hmm. And so I started having, uh, yeah, making a normal business for myself. But I'm not happy if I cannot do anything creative. And mm. then at the same time, I, I, I saw this AR happening, I think, on internet. You saw, uh, and, and I saw, yeah, interesting to think about it i don't completely remember but i saw the the movement of it and the, and it was new and fresh and it had something very light and playful and it had something i used to look for before in video on the art academy i did a lot with video so mm -hmm. it was already a little bit in the direction because video is based on time and movement you don't make the conclusion but you can also break the conclusion mm -hmm. and have, and it can be one video and it's not ruined. You can make something and make it disappear. And so this is what I love about AR because it brings it to another level, this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so for you, it was like a next step in creating videos, let's say, in creating your art? Yeah, and also uh, a light outlet. Like I was not making official art anymore. I was just trying to make money with the different, uh, with the different things I do, but I wanted to create a space in which I could be creative. And then this new medium felt perfect because it is a new medium. I didn't know anything about, so you can start a bit naive, like a child. You can just play with it. You don't have to have all the heavy concepts you were busy with or identities you, I was believing in the end or what I should be as an artist or all this stuff. I just forgot all about it. I started playing. Yes, exactly. And, and AR is perfect for it. And then I met a whole community I didn't know was there. But then I saw all these people doing it. And I felt all these people, so many of them have, have like a, a story where they are not, where they're a bit different. They're not part of a big group or they're not, they, they're looking for, it had something, uh, yeah, like, like a goth subculture or, or a way to, you know, to, to escape, make yourself appear a bit different from what, what, what normal life looks like. Or, so I love this and I thought this is perfect for me. Look where we are. Now you're absolutely like one of the top creators, air creators that everyone knows and loves. Yeah, I don't know how it's got to be like that. And I don't completely believe it because I think there's so many great ones and it's, yeah, some way hard to get noticed. I was amazed in the beginning. That's what I loved about the community that there were actually people who do notice the new people around. And I don't know how they do it because there's so many people creating so many great stuff and the, the social media lets some of them float. Yeah, more, it makes some of them more clear and, 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 and the rest is a bit invisible. And of course I was yeah, very invisible too, but because of the community, somehow you do see each other. And when you, well, when you guys came here, it was, uh, you know, 
helping exactly that. You're making everyone visible. You're also showing the new people uh, who make their first filter uh, in the weeklies, for instance. And and it's so yeah, it's so important and so uh, so beautiful. So yeah, that's what I loved, and that has helped me a lot. Oh, thank you, thank you. And because we've scratched the surface of community, you said that for you it's incredibly important. But do you think that, uh, I don't know how to even to say it, I was wondering that, that how, how community actually influences your art? But how it directly helps is that if you make something and people, yeah, a, a filter is used by people. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not, I have an idea, I show my concept. Sometimes it's nice to do just like making a painting or a drawing people don't need to put it on their face you can just look at it and it can be a post on instagram and it can be inspiring but if you make a filter for people to use that they start moving and dancing or or having fun or whatever they do then then as a creator it's not your concept which is so important necessarily it's mm -hmm. it's what the, the 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 visuals of it do and you cannot control this on your own you cannot know it you cannot know in advance which filters are going to be loved like like my most simple ones i was embarrassed to to show even to people no. but then i did show them and they're the, the most popular ones because i cannot i i am not a, a, some scientist who knows what people love best no one. and i think no, exactly. And I think in a way, sometimes we do think we know this, like the big social media, they're, they're investigating and they want to know this because it brings them money. But I think they're often mistaken, like people, people like, yeah, like crappy filters or punky filters, which fall apart or which are not perfect. People love this. And this gives me so much yeah, pleasure and hope because I don't like the perfect concept or I don't like the, the final conclusion or idea. I just like the, the messiness and chaos of, of, of life. And, and by showing, yeah, I go back to, the, to your question, sorry. By showing, uh, by showing it to a community, by having friends there or people, yeah, who, can, who seriously look at your work and you look at theirs, you, you, get, you can get a feeling for, yeah, how do people respond to this? It's no use making this in your own home and then only showing the final results uh, uh, in, in your house or to a little group of people. You have to see how it's how it will behave on its own without without me. Mm -hmm. So this is why a community, I think, is so important mm -hmm. because the work is in a way uh, so social. How during all of those years? actually the process of creating art changed for you because as you said first of all it was like physical and etc but then it was like philosophy and then it was ar and how all of it evolved into one each other like into the routine into the how it changed and all of that i think what changed is uh if you start using a new medium mm -hmm you sort of begin at zero again mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, it, it, it doesn't listen to you the way you want it to. You don't have a instant choreography. Uh, you don't understand it. But what is so good about it is that then you, it seems you start on zero, but much faster you will recognize what happens with the mediums before that also. You're going to meet yourself, like your own imperfections or or it's a bit comparable to when I had uh, drawing lessons in art school, mm -hmm. you're supposed to, uh, to paint the, or draw the nude models mm -hmm. or the portrait of models. But with everybody starting this, they always draw themselves. It's very hard to get rid of it. <laughs> like you always see yourself in the drawing, like no matter what you do, it will be there. And, and, and to change a new medium is a way to recognize this aspect and then you can try to get rid of it and hate it, but you can also try to embrace it and see what it means. It's, it, it, it teaches you how you can use yourself as a machine. Like it, 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 makes, it makes you not imperfect, but you could also say it makes you specific. And, mm -hmm. and I think what is specific is what is interesting. Like uh, uh, nature is beautiful in its specificity. Like, like it it's, uh, surprises you, it's never the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't this is why I don't like perfection, 
uh, and and yeah, starting with a new uh, medium, you lose the idea of perfection because obviously you don't own this perfection. Yeah, and you Maybe. don't know you don't know what can be created. You're just beginning it, so you actually have everything possible. It's just for you to you know to start actually. Yeah, and you should never be too good at something. I think then if you get too good at something, it gets the baby a bit lazy or you repeat yourself and it's better to just do something else or not do anything for a while uh -huh. or, or, or try to break the things you make or yeah, do something different to it. Yeah, because I think that when you're too good at something, you're actually becoming bored of it because you're good at it. So you don't, you, you know, you don't have any wish or desire to develop something or to start something new or to create something new because you're too good at it so you're basically like huh why would i do that again exactly and i think there's a more reason to make something there's a drive in yourself mm -hmm. and then you forget about it if it becomes too easy to make things and people think it's beautiful then of course it's going to make you happy it feels the best but yeah, it, it is not probably why you started making the things. While we're at it, how did you actually come up with your style? Because as we, it's second filter on, we have lots of more to come, but it's absolutely unique. All of those movements, all of the changes that are happening right now at the same, at the same very moment with me because of this filter are insane. <laughs> so how did you actually come up with it? Can you please tell me? And how would you describe it to our audience? I would describe it as uh, creating a mess. Like you start with the AR or with any technology or with paint. I remember starting to make my first painting. And I think many people who paint will recognize this. You start painting and, and you don't know anything. You just know you start with an empty canvas and you're going to end up with a, with a picture on it. Mm -hmm. but, but then you don't think about when to stop, for instance. Like you can go on forever and, and you don't think yeah, about changes. You're going to make mistakes that you want to change. So if you just keep continuing this at first, you always, I always ended up with this awful gray brown color, which you get when you mix all the paints together. And then there were moments in the making of the work where it looked well promising. This could be interesting, but then it ended up like, yeah, com complete mess. But then you learn to, uh, to use a little bit more the good moments you meet while creating it. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't start with a picture and you want it to show it perfectly because I think it's an illusion because you have a picture in your head. But that picture, it appears a finished painting, but it's not. It's something very vague, these synapses firing off in your head. And it, it's, not, it's not a clear-cut picture. You, mm -hmm. you experience it like this, but I don't think it's true or real so yeah. then you learn to more uh more direct your yeah more focus yourself on what is happening while you're trying to see on the in the community a lot of people asking how can i do this how can i do this yeah. how can i get this but then i always think uh well if you would get that perfectly would it be so interesting mm -hmm. And probably most of the time they don't get there in this perfect way, but they discover many other things which are more interesting on the way. Mm -hmm. I think really anything, yeah, artistic is a communication with the material. Mm -hmm. It's not just a person expressing themselves in the material, but the material is talking back. Mm -hmm. So when I started with AR, I noticed uh, the way the software was made was for me perfect because before you always needed a lot of coding, uh, uh, you, you needed to know a lot about things I don't know much about, mm -hmm. but with patches and you could, you could do things in a very physical way mm -hmm. and visual way. And you can just, uh, yeah, try what happens if you disconnect something and connect it with something else, always something happens. Yeah. And, and you didn't know what was going to happen, but mm -hmm. you can use it. You can make a whole encyclopedia of things like if I do that, oh, then this strange thing happens. And then you can start thinking, okay, how can I bring these things together? Or how can I add color to it? Or then, so, so the work, yeah, it exists in layers. Mm -hmm. And for me, it feels very much like painting. Because mm -hmm. you add something there, you think, oh, it's too much now. You remove something there. So I, I never start out with a, 
with a finished idea. I start out with an idea because I'm also, yeah, made from illusions, but oh. it never becomes that. And I wanted to talk about one of your works specifically. This work was created for our, our call for content or our those long nights. And it's called The Automatist. And you ho you had a whole description and the whole story for it. It was incredibly beautiful. I have uh, the quotes right here. I can read it, but I don't really want to read it because I think that you will talk about it. When you will talk about it, you will just tell everyone your point of vision. So if you could, could you please tell us more about it and about why did you actually decide to create it? Because I know that it's a very personal one. So first of all, I want to thank you for all the great challenges and prizes. And I really, yeah, uh, liked the way it was done. And it was done, yeah, with so much attention and love and, 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 and different from prizes I knew from years before or, or how some things work. It was very, yeah, very personal. And I felt like all the works were considered and looked at and, I think that this was really a great, uh, a great time for, for everyone and to join these things. So thank you. Thank you, you uh, made me blush, honestly, you made me blush. But uh, yeah, the work itself, you were asking before, it, it has to do with this question, you were asking before uh, how you get inspiration or how you create something. And this is how I do it. Like if you don't, like in the night, I make drawings because you can't I, when you can't sleep or late in the evening or when you have a period in which you are not creative. You can sometimes not feel creative for weeks or months, and it's okay. Hey, okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's you really you need it. Like you need to sleep. You cannot be awake all the time. It's the same thing. So, but then you can still do stuff because because you you don't create. Uh, creations on your own you do it together with the material and the world so the world has a lot to tell you and then I make the drawings like automatically I take uh, acrylic uh, acrylic pencils are very good for it or something that's uh, smooth and flowy but you get them you get a big piece of paper and you just start start doing like 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 you're making autographs yeah. or or and little dots and, and you start doing crazy things and you don't even look at it. So you just let yourself go and, and you do it very fast. So you put away the paper fast and start a new one because you really get into it. It's like dancing. So you want to continue to do it, mm. but uh, you will end up with just a blackness if you do it on the same paper. So you have to remember to take a new paper every like uh, minute uh, and then uh, keep them. Mm -hmm. And a few days later, you look at them and there's always a few beautiful parts of it. Like most of them are awful and you throw them away, but there's always good parts in it. And, and they're automatic. You, you have the luxury that you didn't need to use your head and your thinking and this voice that's always talking about in these times, especially it seems, it's talking about perfection or to be different from other people or to be better or to be the best. And I don't believe in all this. Yeah, I wouldn't want to say crap because I think in a way. But it's you know, just very, it has lots of negative power and all of those thoughts, you can't escape those thoughts and unless you decide that that's it. And for yeah, example, yeah. as you say, five minutes before sleep or maybe luckiest people who can get those feelings off for the longer time for example i can't and that's bad and i have to i think i have to start drawing as you said i think it's a very unique experience and very like diving deep you can dive deep with it something something that doesn't need judgment something that yeah. makes you relax and doesn't have a have a reason like, I want to make this because I want to make something special. No, no, it doesn't need these things because I get, I'm a very insecure person. Uh, so I get very insecure about these thoughts. Like maybe you have people who are very certain of their vision. And they think I'm good. I can show this and I can do it. But I, I don't feel this. And I think most of us don't feel this. Yeah. So while it might work for this type of people, it does not work for most of us. Most of us. Uh, get these voices and we feel worse and worse about what we made mm. and we can't see it clearly anymore 
So, so, and it's a shame because, you know, it could have been very different things from the things people who are very certain are making. And we need these things. We need to be proud of our insecurity and to be proud of not knowing what exactly is life or this kind of openness is very hard to explain. You cannot explain it in a slogan. You can only explain it in poetry, in, 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 in movements, in not in fixed icons or sentences. So, so that I, that, that's what, why I feel it's so important. And then I tried to make this uh, automatist filter and I had yeah, different experiments going on with uh, Spark AR in which I try to uh, make the image more abstract uh, in a way. So, so uh, lines become stains and uh, images become lines. And, and I had different, uh, different experiments and then I, could, I tried to bring them together uh, in, in different layers. It was a, a mess and it was awful. The whole work of the automatic work is about the mess. So yeah, everything, exactly. everything went straight as planned. Yeah, but then you have to find a way that it is a mess and not completely a mess. Like, like you cannot, uh, if you use it as a filter, you cannot really uh influence it's exactly like i wanted to show this clearly and this vaguely you can't do it but when you are doing stuff i saw people using it when they're skating or on a bike or because they're moving mm -hmm. the image makes much more sense you see oh there's something natural going on here you don't mm -hmm. necessarily always see what it is but you know this is something real I'm seeing here. So it's the abstracted movement. And this is, yeah, this is what I uh, try to, to uh, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to try and make. And you did a great job. Honestly, when we saw it, everyone were like thrilled because it's something so intimate and it's something so ordinary, let's say, but still not ordinary because not a lot of people talk that they do something like this because I know that lots of people write before they go to sleep or sing before they go to sleep or do something as you said just for themselves just to unwind after a long day but not many people talk about this so when we saw it we were like this is it this is huge this is amazing because it's so suitable for everyone but still so personal it's incredible Thanks. honestly Thank you. I'm very happy to hear this. How do you see actually your future in the AR world? And do you think that basically the whole concept of AR will actually change and the accessibility of it maybe will change as well? The meaning of the medium maybe will change. What do you think about all of it? Oh, that's a very large question. I know. <laughs> Begin by, by telling how I started, how I started, uh, uh, AR mm -hmm. because I wanted to play and find uh, a nice way to create again instead mm -hmm. of a heavy and boring way. I wanted to just and so I tried not to think too often what do I want with this because obviously when it was going a bit uh, better and people started liking it I was thinking oh maybe this can also be a job or a career but then I thought well, it can be, but only on the side, because this is not why I chose it. Mm -hmm. And if I start doing it because I feel I have to, because mm -hmm. other people make me do it, uh -huh. then, then I start getting, like, I can also not always join all the challenges because it always also becomes a little bit like as if somebody else is asking something. Yeah. And, and I try to say no, because I try to, yeah be close to my own feeling why i want to do it so now i'm 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 happy i feel i can express myself in it and i feel i have a i have i have a style or or language i can i can use more freely as in the beginning and i think i don't want to spoil it and i don't need to know where it goes but i'm thinking what how i like to position it because mm -hmm. ar is growing up it's becoming very serious. There's a lot of brands working with it. Mm -hmm. And this is exciting and people doing very exciting things in it, but it's not me. So I want to, to position myself, uh, well, not on the other side of it because I'm not against it. It's mm -hmm. obviously it will happen, but I want to be 
I want there to also be uh, artists who work in AR, not just the, not the designers, but the artists or poets or or people like I see many in the Spark AR group, yeah. like many people who just search ways to express themselves, their experiences in 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 the world, how it is today, and I think that's that's very important to to keep fighting for this part. So so I'm imagining there 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 will we can we can make ways for for uh, a, a new kind of context for art to exist mm -hmm. and so art will be so you would like to stay as an artist you don't you don't want it to be your full-time job or anything you just want to stay okay you just want to stay an artist in the art world yeah. it's so thrilling it's so thrilling it's so exciting for me as well because Nowadays, everyone thinks that art is all about, as we've mentioned multiple times today, all about sculptures, paintings, music, poems, or something like that, something physical. But now everything is so changing drastically and fastly, and the movement is just absolutely incredibly dynamic. And even the thought that we can be artists in digital world is incredible incredibly thrilling yes i agree exactly and i'm really looking forward what i think will change is to have the yeah and 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 why this is also why i like ar specifically mm -hmm. uh not vr and ar but specifically ar in how it is not a world on its own but it's always an interaction already with the mm -hmm. physical worlds with with uh between different devices it's always already a communication going on. So I'm so looking forward to be able to go to an exhibition also in physical space. Mm -hmm. And there will be uh, AR works there or, or, or ways to change. Like, like I think we, we will get better technology still to, to, make the, to make the digital appear, not just on screens, but uh, through glasses, but in the end, Hopefully we don't need all these things anymore and it can be even more uh, uh, exactly. joined up together. So yeah. this is super exciting because then it feels like the, the medium became so fluid. I think then it becomes a language. We never think of language as a medium like clay because language became so perfect, so ethereal, so, mm -hmm. so ghostly or in a way you can't grab it because mm -hmm. it grabs you. You know, it, it it decides for you almost what you're going to say, and I think AR and it will it will become a a, a visual uh, language in this way. I think I have a question in my hand because nowadays a lot of people think about the language, as you said, as something that we can say, or maybe the body language also counts as part of it. But you mentioned the digital language, the art language. How do you see it? how it will how it will translate to another people just by the works that artists will create or there will be something else well I, I think it's a bit difficult to explain but when i studied philosophy my favorite uh, favorite field in philosophy is philosophy of language mm -hmm. because you can invent any perspective anything but it's always in, in the case of philosophy based on language so you know you have to just like Giotto, you have to look at what is the thing you're using. It's also finite. It, it cannot do anything. And how does it do the thing it does? Do I really have the control over it that I think I do, for instance? So, so this is why I find language so inspiring. It's also, uh, it's also a rhythm. The, 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 the way uh, I'm now thinking of words, and where they come from, I don't know. Sometimes I find them. Sometimes you're a bit like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. And where these words come from, it's probably influenced also by the day. It's influenced by the culture I'm from. It's influenced by who my parents were and how, how they were talking. And, and it's, it's like language for me is this, we can see as if it is a thing, but it's actually a knot of all these things coming together because it's just sounds. It's just... Uh, rhythms and sounds and and and, yeah. and nothing more and and this is why i call many things a language mm -hmm. because if you look at it in this way 
that it's so abstract that you can use it in so many cases because it's so abstracted from them. Like uh, the word apple is, has nothing to do with an apple. That's why your language is useful. But but that's how we use visuals also, and and how uh, so so they are uh, functioning in the same way. Mm -hmm. I actually I think you you're gonna like this because every time every day well maybe not every day but very often I ask myself the question who actually invented this word like who decided that as you said apple is actually an apple who decided yeah. who came up with it who came up with the word phone or laptop or effect or something how did like who, why why is it exactly this so if I'm gonna say like couple of sounds is it going to be a word if I'm going to give a meaning to it how does it work so it's incredibly incredibly interesting to see to hear your position about it well the, but what you say now is exactly exactly why why for me it's so interesting and why it has everything to do with uh, creation and creativity because because there was not a single person who thought all of a sudden, let's make something perfect, let's make a language. And now we think, how can you use half a language? How did it look like when we had half a language instead of the whole language? But exactly, how, how could we even communicate? How could we talk about something without it? Then you think language doesn't work like this and creation, creation in general doesn't work like this, where you start with your idea until you have the perfect execution of it. it, it it's not working like this. What, what I find very inspiring is an essay. It was written by Quine, which mm -hmm. is a, a logic, uh, logic language uh, philosopher uh, from the analytic tradition, which I really don't like. But, I, but in the end, uh, he is super inspiring and he has an essay and it's called On What There Is. And then he describes... Uh, uh, he doesn't really answer his question, but he describes that we're actually in a boat, like we're floating on a big sea and uh, there's winds and there's currents and we're on a piece of wood, so we stay afloat. And while we're floating, we're putting other pieces of wood against it. Sometimes it sinks a little bit, so we build something there. We lose another part. And so yeah. we're sort of, we're not on a perfect thing, but we have to be continually busy and changing because we cannot predict everything that will happen and we have to do it with, uh, with what we find around us. So you're in this really imperfect boat which is constantly changing, being falling apart, you have to create it and I think language is a little bit like this. It's, it's and, and whatever you make or try or your vision how life is at this moment mm -hmm. for me i i see the same metaphor for it. it's like it's this imperfect thing but it's the thing you can work with so would you say that you're actually trying to rip apart the boundary be between the people behind the screens and the art that's happening in the digital world the whole experience yes yes I try to, yeah, I try to get rid of the hierarchy. Like somebody mm -hmm. is making it, you have to think that is made, that that's the thing that's supposed to be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. if, if people around it decide it is so, yeah. and then people can watch it. And then you have this whole complex hierarchy, which for me doesn't look at all what, how I experience creation or the reason to create. I don't, I don't recognize, I, I don't see... I don't understand it. I think mm -hmm. maybe maybe we're changing our views on what creation is because this idea of creation in this hierarchy is something we've had in the in the uh, maybe in Europe for a few hundred years mm -hmm. or even less. And before that, and in the, all the other parts of the world, they had very different ideas about the the, the meaning and the role and the place of creation. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I. Uh, I'm happy to to try and investigate myself a bit what creation could also be or mm -hmm. to try to understand the people who have very different ideas about creation and be inspired by them. Nowadays we live in the world where actually social media can be classified as some sort of the all in, let's say, and the whole influencer, model, artist community are 
maybe i don't know rulers or goddesses and gods or something like that if we're gonna bring mythology into it do you how do you feel about this that you kind of want to destroy this old type of care of, of hierarchy but still social media may be kind of a part of it and you're using it because you're creating mm -hmm. art into the digital world i think uh we are looking for ways to organize ourselves in big groups so should we all be on the same platform should we all who should decide what we find interesting all these things are obviously very problematic also we and 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 it has created the 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 hierarchy of influencers and people with a lot less visibility but i also feel it's changing like i feel if i wanted to i couldn't even be an influence influencer because probably I, I i don't really have the character for it but also instagram already seems to work a little bit different like I, I was so lucky that uh, somehow all of a sudden many people started using a few of my filters so they also discovered the other ones mm. and then I also have effects almost nobody uses at the same time but I'm very yeah proud and happy that some really became big but it didn't make me big I didn't get like a million of followers and and and, and it's not important mm -hmm. it, it's it would probably be yeah if you are a very good at being a public person it could inspire you and it could make you do better things but in my case i think it would make me tired and uh, maybe a bit afraid to show things or i don't know what it would do to me mm -hmm. but uh, uh there's not a direct connection between how much your filters are used and how much uh public you get and i think the the the, the friends and the people that follow me they have a genuine interest in the things i post so I feel, I don't feel too bad about it. I don't feel I need more people or I need, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, I cannot answer the question. What you asked, how, how to better organize. I think the future is going to tell. I think mm -hmm. we're already changing. We're all not interested in a few people anymore, but trying to find a little bit more of our own uh, subcultures or, or our own. Mm -hmm. uh, works and i like that but i also don't like to have all the people locked up in their own subculture so yeah. I, I don't know i don't know how to solve this but i know that by making uh effects or works that go around the world and are used by people with very different cultures yeah. and very different ideas this for me feels like it breaks it open a little bit like okay. like these people are using them but they don't have to listen to me and they don't have to care why I make it, but it can still be uh, meaningful to them or just fun. I mean, it's not always so meaningful. You just try a filter and, you know, but uh, this is the part of it which I do like and, and which uh, yeah, keeps me going. I wanted to ask you about the gallery that we're airing together with this interview, the virtual space that we're creating together. And uh, I actually wanted for you to say a couple of words to our audience about it, about the way it's going to present itself, about the concept that you had behind it, about the idea that you had behind it, because I know that it's a very, it has a lot of meanings and I wanted to hear what you say. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. Uh, first of all, again, thank you so much for asking me to to build a gallery together. It's a very big opportunity, and I love it because it's it, yeah, it's it's because I don't try to make works only to make money, but I try to make works uh, out of uh, artistic uh, reasons. The, this is yeah, this is a very big opportunity for me, like to to be able to show it in this way. It's an uh, for us as well. So thank you. And then uh, when you ask, I think, yeah, how to do it? Because of course the virtual world is still new and the virtual spaces and the way they look. And I thought, uh, how can I show the, the movements which I try to have in my works? How can I have that in the space? Because I'm not a perfect 3D designer, uh, but your people uh, are good at it and uh, help me a lot. But 
but uh, how to do it in a simple way, I thought maybe it could start with an actual 3D space, like a classical space, like a museum would look. It would be squarish and it would have white walls or light walls. It has benches. It has sort of canvases hanging to show the works. And then gradually when you move through the space, the space gets broken but in a kind of abstract way, not in a violent way, but it just falls apart a little bit because you're thinking, why do you need to have a normal space in virtual reality? You don't need walls because mm. you can decide that there is no wind or, you know, you don't, you don't need a roof or, or so the space gets broken open and uh, a bit more chaotic. And then I can show, yeah, the more chaotic aspects about my own work. Mm -hmm. uh, by moving through this space. And then I wanted to end the space with a vehicle, like uh, uh, a boat. Uh, people can see, can imagine themselves that the horizon is forever further. So the space ends there, but uh, uh, it doesn't end in a destruction or, or, or in the ending of the world, because it would look like that without the boat. But with the boat, it looks like, okay, this is from, you leave from here. Here you 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 uh, you invent it on your own it's something like that. Me. So it's not also about me and my works necessarily because the works are about interactions. So yeah, if you have a normal museum and then with AR you see your own or people's faces all the time. So if you would just see these big faces in the museum, it will be a bit yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, like. Uh, you make some things appear very important uh, when there are not. So mm. uh, that's why I try to use the space in a way that it's not only just making the works look big and important, but it's uh, it's something on its own. Mm -hmm. So even in this gallery, you decided that the movement, the, the boundary, the movement is the, one of the most important parts, the, pa the boundary between people and art is kind of doesn't exist as well as in the physical world but also in the digital world in this virtual gallery and everything is so open because there is no finale no there's just yeah the the possibility of change yeah and, and, and maybe it can give people the idea, oh, maybe this space is going to look different if we come back in 10 years. Who knows, it's maybe it will. Because it's digital, so it doesn't have to look dif different, but I, I wanted to have this, yeah. I, I want everything I make to have this aspect of temporary, that it's temporary so, like it's mm -hmm. not forever. Mm -hmm like uh, like it has the same uh, the same quality as a flower which is only like that for a little while and uh and not the same as any other besides it they're all a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, because they have the imperfections mm -hmm. well what we call imperfections but still flowers can grow as well as and change as well yeah, as this gallery true. it can grow and change who knows it's going to be even in the nearest future Maybe it exactly. will. And I wanted to ask you last question, but not least, definitely not least, because it's again about the community and about people who just start their journey with the ER. And I was wondering, maybe you could say a couple of words about, or a couple of, give a couple of advices to people who just start their journey. What are the most important aspects for you? Or what do you suggest doing or not doing maybe? Could you say some something about this, about the whole experience? Mm, yeah, it's a bit contrary probably, but of course I see all the, the questions always asked and people ask often to each other, how do you get a style and, and things like this? And I think the only answer is not trying these things so much. The only answer is to be slow. Like you have to work a lot. It's always best to work a lot, but you have to experiment and, and, and not work towards a goal, but just play. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have to, your style because I think what a style is, is, is the way, you know, if, if 
you, maybe you have a lover and uh, and then and then uh, when you're in love you see the way they tie their laces or the way they do this or so specific only they do it this way and some and sometimes you 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 hate them in the end that they do this thing again like when you don't like them anymore but what i mean is it's so specific this is already for me style they didn't invent it it's because their body is this way they have this history they have so the way you interact with the world this is what makes a style i think so if you get more conscious of this you should let yourself go a little bit because if you think about how should i have a style is the th same as when you would think about how should i walk mm. like say you're in puberty and you're insecure and you think i want to walk manly but i don't walk this way and you're going to invent a walk well yeah. you see people on the street doing this walk and it looks they just to try it. yeah yeah and it's sweet but it's also yeah a bit sad because it's not it's 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 not helping this is not how you you develop a style you really cannot run away from yourself in this way it's it's a fun experiment to try i i definitely have tried and i'm still trying to get away from myself but uh yeah in the end for me uh, try to focus on style as something you cannot control but something that is always with you so try to look in everything you made how what do i recognize and probably it's the things you hate at first it's probably the things you don't like about your work but in the end i think they will give you your style i'm actually i can explain it i'm in the same position as somebody starting out with ar right now because i never talk on instagram i never give interviews before and now i'm doing this so i know for a fact when i see this video back I'm going to see myself move too much. I'm going to hear my voice and not like it. And I think my English is normally much better, I thought. And, and I'm going to see all these things. But then if I keep making videos in which I talk, then the imperfections in my English and in my voice and in my movements, they become, they can morph. They can become something maybe nicer, which I can like too. Honestly, I still don't believe you that that's the first interview. I'm incredibly grateful that I'm your first with this talk, but since I wanted to say incredibly, I want to thank you very much for it, for agreeing to be a part of this, for talking to me, for taking your time, for listening to my questions, for answering with such deep questions answers i'm sorry you see you see it's kind of not my first interview but still there are a couple of there were a couple of mistakes made but still it's gonna be okay and this is the main advice practice we are young, so i'm happy there were mistakes and and i want to thank you for the opportunity of the interview i've been really impressed with the questions like they were so deep and uh, there was nothing superficial or easy or asking my favorite color or anything like it you went straight in with the difficult questions and it made it yeah so interesting because it yeah it makes me say things i didn't know this was what i was thinking and because of these questions you you get somewhere so thank you wants to be a part of it as well that's totally it's my normal. biggest supporter but now he wants to be a part of it yes <laughs> oh well i'm not against it i'm definitely not against this cutie can be with us for the whole eternity but he felt he's very smelly because he fell in the water this morning on his walk <laughs>